everyone. It's Thursday night here in New Jersey and good morning, Manila. Welcome to another episode of Getting Candid with Rochi. And guess guys, alam nyo ba? It is June and aside from graduations and June brides, did you know that June is Pride Month? So happy Pride! And so guys, tonight I want to make sure that Pride Month will be very special. We have not one, but two guests. Oh, diba bonga? So first off, on guest natin, she's a nurse. Yes, nurse in the morning. <laughs> and then she's also a model, an actress. Please welcome Miss Angel Kinan. Yes. Hi. Hi, Angel. Hi, Oops. Hi. Nice to be here. Thank you for inviting me yeah. and hey, everyone watching. Hi. Uh, hi, Ali. Now, this is our second guest. Seen naka intro naka agad. She her name is Ali Cat Castle. She is a makeup guru and of course she made me prepare tonight because she is a makeup artist for cbs news so hopefully i i'm able to look the part even though she had, she didn't make do my makeup because i know she'll do better so please welcome ali cat castle hi ali hi everyone hi roshi and hi angel and hi to everyone who's watching Frugalista mom. Mabuhay and happy Pride Month. Yes. See, now I'm, I'm getting your line now. Yes. So, guys, I just want to let you know if you have any questions, you can type in there or comments because we're more than happy to answer them. And I'm sure they're here to answer some of those questions that um, for us moms, because they're not moms yet, for us moms who might be thinking what's going on with Pride Month, they're more than willing to explain to us, oh, geez, is what my uh, children call me. Yes, I, I prefer the OG than the boomer, okay? So let's, what before does OG we start. mean? Original. Oh, the original. Yes. Basically, they're telling you you're old. <laughs> Well, right. I guess we're that old that I don't know that term. <laughs> <laughs> I got three teenagers and one preteen, so I got all those words from <laughs> from whatever. Anyway, uh, for those who are watching, Angel and Alley Cat are actually sisters. Yes. Oh, see, I'm copying your yes now, Alley. <laughs> And for those of you who don't know, they're also uh, have they also have a show or a YouTube channel called Trans Sisters TV, right? So before we start, because Pride Month for those of you who still don't know is actually LGBTQ plus <laughs> plus month. So we are celebrating with our amazing brothers and sisters in that community. So let's get started. For those OGs like us, what does LGBTQ mean or can you differentiate them? Who can start? Angel. Angel? So, um, so LGBTQ plus, you know, it's like kind of a group of... Um, uh, if you actually want to like specifically say about each letter, obviously L is for lesbians, uh, G is gay, T is for transgender, um, oh, B, I, I skipped B, <laughs> B is for bisexual, um, and then Q is for queer, and then it's plus. So um, as we know, I guess traditionally, or majority of the people probably would be considered cisgender, and attracted to like if they're male attracted to female so it's almost like anything outside of that <laughs> is part of the lgbtq plus community um okay yeah yeah so uh for me no when i started when i was saying probably when i was young i'm introduced to the gay and the lesbian 
you know that's all i know right it's either like you know a boy who's being a girl and a girl like being a boy right that's all i know what is by means you know a bisexual means because i know most people are like what is that you know yeah so bisexual is um being attracted to two um, so not just one gender, but because before we only know girl and boy, so bi was more popular to use. Um, although now, um, I, 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 I'm not too expert on this, but I believe people who also consider themselves bi, it doesn't necessarily mean just two. It's kind of the whole spectrum. Um, it doesn't have to be specifically girl, boy, because, um, you know, it could be queer and other stuff. So it's almost like being... If, if I want to confuse you more, pansexual, which is more. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I heard the pan. Uh, my, my kids explained pan to me because when some people are saying they're pan, my kids explained to me that they love everybody. <laughs> That's so it's, basically, it's gender is not important. You love the person for uh, as a person, you know, so you're attracted to um, any. And then what's the difference between trans gender and queer <laughs> Ali. well i'll answer what transgender is so basically what transgender is um you're basically um because basically once you're born what they define you is what they see um of your genitalia so basically mm -hmm. transgender is um living the life that you conform so like for example um because i feel like i'm not born in the wrong body i'm the way i am and i'm i i love the way that i'm a transgender woman but um since when i was born the doctor actually verified my gender according to what they saw in my genitalia but of course when i grew older i realized that i'm actually a woman and that's the reason why i'm a transgender woman so mm -hmm. if that makes sense okay and what is queer okay that, that's more question angel what is queer um so queer uh for me <laughs> that's my definition queer um similar to you because i'm an og so queer is not really <laughs> something that i used to use like growing up so um if you guys are also having a challenge with like the new definitions of these I just know that it's not just you. I mean, also us, you know, because it's something a little newer that we kind of reclaim. Because queer before, like, it's almost like derogatory, you know, and people doesn't want mm -hmm. you to be called queer. But now, like, people are actually proud to say that they're queer. And I am queer because I do not have to conform to a specific, like, you know, um, very very feminine or very masculine and you kind of am queer because you can it doesn't really matter you know i can wear pants if i want to i can wear a skirt if i want to um and similar to other people and um so that's how i would define queer is kind of um being able to express yourself um however you want to um so it's and kind of i also start understanding it and hearing it more like almost like as an umbrella term for the whole lgbtq community is you're queer um i think that's the best way i can explain it um for transgender as what ali said when we are born usually you're going to be labeled already if you're a male or female based on what they see so being transgender me um angel we did not hear the last words you said uh we yeah. can't hear you um we can't hear you oh okay. i mean i can't hear her at least but uh can you hear her no i can hear you uh, angel yes, we can't angel, hear you there was something in your audio can you hear yeah. me now oh yeah I yes can hear you now. Mm -hmm. okay yeah. yeah yes okay so guys they gave us some explanations so I hope you'll try to understand it because until now I'm getting confused even though I have three teenagers and one preteen at home and I'm so used to because I am this I call myself like their school mom like I always adopt any other kid there in school and it's funny because they were like telling me oh your mom said I have four kids what is another one another one so they just call me like the school mom 
or in middle school, they call me the drama mom because I'm the one who helps out in the drama program. So every time they, they would see me, they're like, hey, mom. And my, my husband's like, what is going on? Yeah, that's my other kid, you know, <laughs> like I have that one. So anyway, because wow, I'm so introduced... you're very motherly and loving. And everything. Yes, that that's why most of them like because when they're in middle school, they are what, six, seven, eighth grade. And that's when I see most of them transitioning or yeah. finding themselves or maybe just experimenting on who they are. So I see them on that awkward stage. And because it's the drama group, you know, who mostly goes in the drama group are, you know, those kids. So I always tell them, you know what, if you're scared or this one, or sometimes I would see them that, you know, oh, they're dating and, you know, my kids. And then my kids are like, mom, don't ask. I said, no, I just want to know if they're dating. I'm not going to tell because I said I support them. So anyway, for both of you, at what age did you feel that there's something different or, you know, like that may be awakening or realize that's what they said? At what age did you have it, Angel? Um, I already knew, like, um, even as early as I think four years old, I already knew that I'm different. I already knew that um, I wanted to wear skirts, you know, because I was looking at our cousin that's who's female. I'm like, why can she wear skirts and pants and I cannot? So <laughs> that's kind of how I knew. But the term transgender was not popular with us OGs in yeah. the Philippines at that time. We just know bakla and bakla is yeah. not like the whole LGBTQ plus community. Yes. So um and in in school that's how they teach you also. It's like there's a girl and there's a boy and this is the role of the girl and this is the role of the boy. So I I don't know how to explain it but um I already knew that there's I'm different, I guess, from the traditional thing that they're teaching yeah. at that time. How about you, Ali? I believe um, um, as early as age six, um, when I went to La Salle Green Hills for kindergarten two, and I remember at that time, suddenly I had a crush on, you know, like the same sex. And of course, from then on, I felt like that was something that was something special, something that's not usual. And so that's the time that I can remember where everything is uh, quite special for me. See, actually, most people think that um, it's the environment that, you know, that influences you to be, you know, to open up on a different, you know, a way or step out from the norm. But I guess you guys are actually part of, all boys because they said if you if you're if you're the only boy and you have a lot of girl siblings you tend to be more feminine and the chances of you uh being gay or you know anything on the lgbt will be higher but you you came from a family or you know a family of boys right so did you think there's a, an influence no, I don't think so. I think we're, you're just born as that. <laughs> you can have somebody grow up with a bunch of females. You can grow up, you know, like um, with somebody trying to teach, teach you to play with dolls. But if you really are straight and cisgender, then you're not going to think about um, being attracted to, you know, the same um, gender or, or wanting to transition. So really, it's, um, I mean, in the end, it's easier if I if I'm just like a cisgender boy. If if I mm -hmm. knew that I was, I would be more successful. Probably I will have less like you know, um, like uh, people telling me not to do it. I have less resistance from everybody. But it's just not who we are. It I think it's it's really something that you're born with. Um, it's not influenced. You know, um, the influence part is probably being scared to come out. You know, being uh -huh. scared to present as who you are um, and trying to conform with the norm of maybe getting married and having kids and everything. And then, but am I really going to be happy if I conform yeah. to who I'm not? Um, so I don't think it's, um, 
environmental. Obviously, we grew up on kind of the same environment, so I, can, you know, I want to argue that too. But it's um, it's we don't choose to be like this. Um, it's mm -hmm. it, it is what it is. It is yeah, it is actually a gift. I have to say, you know, the gift of being different and unique. I always tell my kids, you know what, you are unique of who you are. So anyway, how did your parents react? Or, you know, your family reacted when you came out? Ali? Yeah. Um, our parents were not. I mean, our dad really is very cool. So he's really chill with everything. It's really our mom who really was, uh, um, it was really hard for her, you know, really? to take it. Yeah, exactly. Actually, I'm surprised because usually it's the dad who's always been like No, not, strong. In, the, not in the case of my family. Basically, the head of the household in my family is my mom uh she's a very strong woman um she knows what she wants she's a very successful businesswoman as well um she i'm very very thankful for her because i think because of her we were able to have a good role model of um of how it is to you know how important a family is how important it is to work hard and for you to achieve your dreams oh. but it was really hard for my mom i guess that is because we came from a, like a very religious background and you know since we um and s until now actually i still consider angel we still practice our faith you know we still go yeah. to church we pray a lot and things like that um but i think it was the hardest with my mom because at first she was questioning like why like was, why? was there a reason like how did it happen you know you know and you know it's it's hard, but um, I I guess moving to the United States, it helped her understand that um, you can be who you are here, uh -huh. and still be celebrated and still become successful, and so I think it actually helped that she actually had that environment. Now this is actually where the environment helps, is that when she actually saw that girls like us, meaning transgender Trans women or transgender men out there. Um, can do great things here and you are respected. You also have the same opportunities unlike back in the Philippines that unfortunately if you're trans, you're not given much opportunities, you know, unless if it's the entertainment industry. Otherwise, it's really very hard to go to the mainstream and just do things the way you can because you're not being judged for your gender. And so, so I think moving to the United States really helped my mom open her eyes that, you know what, it's okay. But for the longest time, she really had a hard time. But you know what, that's actually okay. You know, this is actually what we say. It's normal for her to feel that way because she just wants the best for us. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, she just doesn't, because she's scared that what if something happens to us? You get what I mean? Because it's not the norm. And when something is not the norm, then that's the time that people question or people kind of like um, distance themselves, you mm -hmm. know? But since it's very evident here of the kind of opportunities that we can have and how people here can evolve, you know, I mean, that helped. But just to answer your question, I know that was a long answer. Um, it, was <laughs> really hard for her. it was it was really hard for her in the very beginning, but now everything's okay. Okay, can I say now? I'm not saying your age because it's not right, but let me tell you. I think Angel is uh is a little younger than Alley Cat. So, are you like on the same time when you came out, or who came out first? <laughs> you know, like. Not being born, but as um, as, as a, a transgender, transgender woman. Angel, would you like to answer that first? So, so coming out for us is a little bit diff. Like there's a few coming out, you know, because <laughs> um, when we were younger in the Philippines, um, coming out. So we are transgender women attracted to males. So um, being attracted to male, you that's the first one that we kind of came up with, and that's back when we were in the Philippines and. Um, I was 17 and Ali was um, two years older than me. Um, so at that time, she came out first. Um, 
And then she, my mom asked me, and I, I thought, you know, she was accepted. And I'm like, yes, I am too. But then she, as what Ali said, it, 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 it was hard for her to accept that because she was scared for our lives, you know. Yeah. Really, it, it's scared for our lives because the, the stereotype before in the Philippines is that if we're like this, we will not ever find um, somebody who's ever going to love me. We're going to pay mm -hmm. for them. And then maybe they're going to hurt us if we cannot. That, you know um, yes. sustain them anymore so she like said no you can't be like that if you're gonna be like that we're gonna part ways and this and that so um we kind of hit in the closet after that even though we were <laughs> out um because we chose family because we chose to stay in the family and not like run away or like leave the house you know so we chose family and um, it took a while again for all of us to kind of be in the United States and we were on different times and um, our older brother is gay. <laughs> so, oh, I didn't know so that. At, at one time, my, our mom asked um, my older brother how could she be a better mom and that's when my older brother outed all of us again. <laughs> like <laughs> saying, you know, Ali, you know, Angel is dating somebody in uh, in Albany and Ali also is dating and they and I have a boyfriend and they all want to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we kind of had to and then she, at that point she was a little bit more open already um so she invited everybody for lunch and she even made this comment about um wow na lahi ang ng puti wala namang mga anak very yeah. filipino <laughs> yeah so meaning now we we have like white blood in the family but nobody's gonna get pregnant basically that's kind of the gist of it in english um so that's that's when the coming out about being attracted to males mm -hmm. and then being wanting to transition as females um because it never left my mind even though i tried as what i said it's not a choice it's i know from four years old and it never left my mind that that's what I want and who I am. Um, and so later on, I told my mom first that I'm ready to transition. So I, at that point I came out first before Ali and the rest oh. of it. So, so I, I know it's kind of a long because it's like coming out for us, it, it come came on different like steps and different mm -hmm. times. So, yeah. But at least you got the support of Ali, Kat, and your and your other brother, right? Actually, Angel transitioned um, a year before I did as a transgender woman, and then I followed her, even though I'm three years older than my than Angel. So it was actually harder for my mom, I think, when we transitioned as transgender women. But we just assured her that, you know what, mom, you, um. You, you're like the perfect mom. You did the best mm -hmm. that you can. This is just mm -hmm. who we are. You know, it's yeah. not about the way you raised us. It's not about, you know, I mean, if you missed at something, you know, it's, this is about, this is just who we are, you know, and believe, and like what Angel said a while ago, we also said that if we could just live our, our lives straight, we could have, or like cisgender rather, mm -hmm. um, because that's the easier route. But, are you really going to live your life not living your truth? Yeah. Are you really always going to conform on what other people are going to say about you? If you will always conform on what the society expects of you, you will never be happy. Yeah. And I think that's one thing that I respected about Angel and respected about myself. We chose our happiness because once you choose your happiness, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to forget your responsibilities for yourself as well as for your family. Um, at the end of the day, you are the only one who can tell if you will be successful or not. Because regardless mm -hmm. of what your environment says about you, you still have the last say at the end of the day. So mm -hmm. are you going to make other people make you happy or are you going to make yourself happy? That's the question. Yeah. Uh, diva. No, actually, that's uh, you raised a very interesting point now because, you know, I'm a mom now. I have, you know, I've. I have four kids and then I've seen a lot of kids who are finding themselves right now, um, especially in the middle school and high school. Um, that is a very good point that you mentioned earlier that it is not the parents' fault. Because sometimes I think it's harder for the parents because they would, you know, a part of them said, what did I do wrong? 
why why is the product that i raised is I, I wouldn't say it's bad but it's like it's not the usual you know because sometimes when you see things that are not usual or yes against the norm it's hard for us to accept like what did i do wrong and of course another point that you mentioned is your mom trying to protect you because as we know because i also grew up in the philippines um we do have uh i would say a certain stereotype for you know I would say gay people are lesbian because that's what they usually say in the Philippines is that for example the gay you'll always be in the entertainment business you're you're always a hairdresser a fashion designer a makeup artist that's it and then you can't you know you can't be a doctor you can't be a nurse because people will tend to stay away from you or like oh I don't want that you know like I don't want that person to to serve me to talk to me so Speaking but of now that, now we have proven that it's not like that. I know, right? <laughs> now and, we have a congresswoman who's a transgender woman in the Philippines. You know, we have yeah. like, yeah, that's Geraldine so Roman. Yes, mm -hmm. the very first openly transgender politician. So thank you, uh, Congressman Geraldine Roman, for being a good representation of the transgender community. Yes, and also speaking of that, what do you think? Uh, you know, who do you, which country do you think is more acceptable, the U.S. or the Philippines? Oh, I, for, I think it's yeah. different in different ways. Like, um, because the being acceptable, um, or accepting, um, because in the Philippines, they know that we exist, you know, <laughs> yeah. but but they kind of degrade you maybe for being it uh, as what you said like maybe some people would say oh they could not achieve things because they're like that um in terms of the government of course you can't change your id um you know to female and this and that and in the u.s we're protected by law because we can change our our our, our passports and our ids to female so we can protect ourselves on kind of like you know, being bullied because that's what they see on the ID and this and that. Um, but there are some parts of the United States and especially some groups, let's say the African-American community, it's kind of hard to see that the alarming rates of high, um, you know, um, like murders for transgender women. Mm -hmm. um, so even though it's in the United States and they're protected by law, but because we're in the United States and they're less maybe accepting or tolerating of it, then they, yeah, it kind of go go on the opposite route. So like kind of in the US, I feel like it's a little bit polar. Like, you know, like it depends on, on who you're seeing and yeah. who is like accepting or not accepting versus in the Philippines in general. It's not too common to see murder specifically <laughs> yeah. because we're trans, although it happens, you know. Yeah. Um, but so uh, I would say U.S. as uh, overall for me personally, but because of those specific cases that are not for me, then I, you know, yeah. So that that's kind of like the long answer of my answer. <laughs> we're accepting. I, I think it mm -hmm. seems like that's our trend today. We give long answers. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I don't have the bell. There's no time well, limit. Well, yes. Well, if I could actually answer that question to piggyback on what Angel said, I actually think that both are accepted, both in the Philippines as well as the United States. The only difference is that I think because in the Philippines, you know, I mean, this is just based on my experience or at least from my observation. I think because we are a Catholic Christian nation uh, predominantly, um, a lot of our politicians basically base the way they make their laws because of their beliefs and technically i think that the advantage of living in the united states is religion is actually separate from the law or mm -hmm. from the constitution because basically um you know constitution is like what's best for all you know unfortunately in the philippines they kind of like mix and this is very evident with a lot of our politicians that they mix their beliefs on how they want to run the country. And that's the reason why certain, um, this is my personal opinion, by the way, okay? And that's the reason why certain opportunities for the LGBTQ plus IA community back home mm -hmm. cannot ever move forward, you know? But it's proven and it's so evident that once you are um, 
your once you have fulfilled your fullest potential and once you've embraced who you are and you're given the chance to live your truth whether you're a cisgender person lesbian gay bisexual transgender as long as you get to live your truth you will be successful and you will be happy regardless of wherever you are in the world or in the universe so that's all I'm going to mention. Wow. I like that. Confidently beautiful with a heart. You know, because I mean, I think this is the thing. We cannot sugarcoat things. Yes. But we need to base things because things will only change if you see something and say something. Mm -hmm. It is when you see something and don't say something and don't act on what you say that things will not progress. Mm -hmm. So we will yes. only progress if we will open our eyes that, you know what, at the end of the day, all of us are human beings. And each person, just like what um, last year's Miss Universe said, Zozi, uh, Zozi Bini Tunzi, mm -hmm. you, any person, deserves a chance to create their own space in this world. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because at the end of the day, bottom line, all of us are the same. Yeah. Actually, you know what? Uh, I just realized that now because um, it's what it was only like uh, I think three years or four years ago where our, our town high school um, put a gender neutral bathroom. You know, like they have that bathroom because you know it's always male and female, and it's the high school, so they put one now bathroom for them. Uh, at first. A lot of parents are like, why? You know, like they were saying, why? And then actually when I first heard it, I said, why? And then my children explained to me because sometimes they could be bullied in the bathroom. So that is their safe space. You know, for and then it's only a one um, one person bathroom. It's like a teacher's bathroom, one person bathroom. So, and then that's when I realized, because most of them, yeah, because sometimes you don't know they look like mostly like a girl and they're actually a boy and then i think some parents are which i i totally told you know told some parents you know you better it's better for you that they have their bathroom instead of you wondering like you know maybe a transgender was in the girl's bathroom you'll be more freaked out so it's better to have that little space for them than to freak out because you're freaking out already just to have a bathroom you know and then i think it's it's good that here in the u.s we do have this the safe space or sometimes now like family bathrooms that you could use because i know um back in college i know some transgender in la salle <laughs> and they, they can't go uh, most of them they can't go to the male bathroom because of what they look like because we don't have uniforms so they you know they could dress what they like you know they would be wearing slacks and then little heels and then i know some because it's a big experience because some of the girls will be like wait up i know them yeah you know them the two of them are always together whenever they enter the bathroom so that they will not scare the women or the girls but and then some of them would go out i said you know what let them do because it's you know it's a big bathroom if they want to put their makeup on it's fine because they can't do that in the male bathroom and you know that school didn't have the gender neutral bathroom and i guess in the philippines they still haven't done that right but uh, i don't know right now on, on what the policies are in the bathroom there um usually they're a little bit progressive anyway at la salle but i don't know <laughs> specifically um but let me clarify that even though there's a gender neutral bathroom it's good that it's there um it's good for people who are still transitioning or kind of like you know um prefers to be on their own private space like i am a transgender woman and i use the women's bathroom because yeah. we are women um so but again it kind of the, that's where the policies are important for us if they're really an ally for the transgender community yeah is that um, if they're going to allow us to use the bathroom of our preferred gender or, or, or identified gender, you know. Um, so I, I, it's common that if there's something new and something that's not understood by, by you know, parents or older uh, people, yeah. that it's, it, I think it's normal to question it or ask why. Um, but mm -hmm. I think it's important to understand that 
that we just want to use the bathroom. <laughs> I mean, in the I know. End, we just want to use the bathroom. And and as you already explained very well, we will get bullied on the other bathroom. So mm-hmm. we should be allowed to use the bathroom of the preferred gender, you know. So, mm-hmm. um, but it's good to have at least that um, gender neutral bath- bathroom as an option. But I think it shouldn't limit like that just because we're trans, that's what the bathroom that we have to use and we cannot use, mm-hmm. you know, um, the other bathrooms, if that makes does that make sense to you. Okay. So speaking of that, now let's go to the challenges. Because you know, those are one of the challenges that you face. So what were some of the challenges you faced when you were growing up? You know, before you, you became an adult? Because I know those are I would say probably your grade school, middle school, or high school years is when you are really finding yourselves, right? So what were the challenges you encountered back then? I think, it's, I think it's the same challenges with everyone. You know, if someone wants to pick on you, they're going to pick on you. But you know what? You cannot pick on me because I'm going to fight back. Mm-hmm. So again, I think it's, sometimes it depends also on the family support that you have, depending on how your parents raised you. If your parents raised you to be a strong person, then you're going to attack. You know, mm-hmm. so um, I mean, at least I handled myself that way. We're not, you know, we're not saying to be violent, but you know yeah. when you need to stand up for yourself. So I mean, I, cause for me, I guess, I guess it's because it's normal. You get what I mean in school that you experience that way. But I guess because I come from like a very loving and supportive family. I really almost did not see that. I was happy being with my friends and all of them like were gay and I don't care. And they're being mm-hmm. teased too. So you know what? All of us are being teased. But at the end of the day, you know what? I'm it's fine. I mean I really it wasn't really um I I'm, I'm not sure if I answered your question, but I never never really saw them as challenges. You know, because I I knew that um I had to stand up for myself because if I don't stand up for myself then no one else will. So it just depends on the person, I believe. Well, I, I think there's a lot of challenges just being mm-hmm. different, you know. Um, I'll start with, again, when I was four years old, like not being able to wear the skirt, not being able to wear whatever <laughs> I want to do. Um, at some point, I was playing with Barbies and it was confiscated from me and that's something that I want to do, you know. So, I mean, that's a challenge for a kid. I mean, that's, might be shallow at this point but that's actually like you know that's emotional you like very emotional and you're not allowed to do what you like to do um kind of growing up to in school then kind of like being bullied in school kind of like um being discriminated being thought less of um kind of being policed at the school and they would like try to report it with your parents being scared of that you know because mm-hmm. it's a catholic school and it's um i'm sure it has affected our grades if, if the, <laughs> the, the the teachers are biased and stuff um and then come high school when you start being attracted to who you're attracted to if they don't see me as a girl then they're not attracted to me either mm-hmm. you know so it was hard to kind of even foresee if anybody will even love me mm-hmm. or would yeah. i ever be worth loving you know because mm-hmm. that's not something commonly seen back then and it's commonly kind of like told to you that no those people these are the only ways that they can find yeah. love you know um and then uh college the obviously the coming out being not being accepted and now mm-hmm. you're scared for your security if you still can finish a good degree yeah. versus leaving the home or not having a family or not having a house or 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 this you know so there's definitely a lot of challenges but as what Ali said, I mean, it, it. I feel like those, we all have different, all of us have challenges, so, yeah. regardless if you're trans or not. But if I want to just like point out the specifics about trans, those are the ones that that are my challenges. But those are also the things that made me strong and and mm-hmm. it's unique to my story. And, and I have no regrets about all of them. I'm not sharing it as a regret i'm sharing it as a learning tool for parents like you mm-hmm. you know and and for you to understand that the kids have feelings too, <laughs> you know? yeah like, sensitive with those things and i understand now that that you know that 
let's say my parents were doing it because they love us and they want us to be successful. Um, and it's not common to see successful LGBT community yeah. before. Um, but now we're here, we're out, we're proud, and we can be successful being part mm-hmm. of the LGBT community. And I hope you guys can support your kids. Yes. <laughs> LGBT. Um, if I could just add on what Angel said, actually, you know what's really sad, Rochi? Yeah. If sometimes your own countrymen, your fellow Filipinos, are the ones mocking you. Mm-hmm. It's your own culture. It's your own people. Meanwhile, mm-hmm. here in the U.S., you're celebrated for who you are yeah. by all these amazing foreigners. And mm. meanwhile, sometimes it's your own people, and that's the sad truth. But then again, on the lighter side of things, how will you appreciate joy when there's no sadness? Mm -hmm. How will you appreciate sunshine when there's no rain? Mm -hmm. And how will you appreciate laughter when there's there's no no tears? And so it's just a matter of, are you going to see the glass half full or are you going to see the glass half empty? Empty. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you'll be able to gauge how you're going to live your life because you're only given one life so are you going to um, get beaten up by the challenges or are you going to go and choose life and live your life? Yeah, that's amazing. Okay, I think you're in the top five now. <laughs> no, that, that is, no, this is really good because that's why I, you know, when, when it's funny because my daughter, um, this month, uh, I think June 1st, she told me, Mom, it's Pride Month because one of her best friends is um, actually transitioned. She's now a transgender. She used to be a girl. Now she's slowly transitioning. She's, well, see, I, I, I always feel bad because my daughter keeps telling me, he 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 and i'm like i'm sorry because i saw her growing up you know like she's and then you know and then she changed he changed her his name now and i told her i told him you know what sometimes i still get confused because you're still my baby you know that and i love you and she's like oh it's fine i know i know you know i know you mean well if you're confused with the name you know it's fine and then she got uh he got a younger sister who is uh, around third grade so it's like yeah my sister is still confused so that's why we're, we're still telling her this is my name if she calls me her it's fine because it's confusing her you know at third grade but but anyway, my daughter was telling me, it's Pride Month. What will you do? Do you have any? I said, I already planned that. I don't have one. I have two. And then she's like, oh, my mom is so. And I'm like, yeah. No, because, you know, my dad always calls me when I was younger. I'm so bakla. <laughs> Why? Because it's like, you're a girl? Because he always tells me, I got a heart of a man, <laughs> but I'm always like dressed up. So like, yeah, you're my bakala. I, you know, my, and then my daughter, when, you know, she was so like me growing up and I always tell her, oh my God, you're my bakala. You're so bakala. And that's why she knows what so bakala means. And she said, no, no, you're so bad. No, it's a, it's an, it's a term of endearment. Don't take it, you know, as, because remember Filipinos, sometimes is how we say it. Yeah. Yeah, so when she's like, and it's okay, your mom is bakla anyway, so you're bakla too, so we're like laughing. Sometimes the translation is a little bit different, you know. So mm-hmm. like, are you saying babaeng bakla? Or something? Yes, babaeng bakla. <laughs> <laughs> it is, babaeng like bakla. The mannerisms of the stereotype of gay, but you're cisgender female. That's kind yeah. of how it is. That, That's why she's also, that's my oldest. Cause now she's she's into false eyelashes. She's so into makeup. My wow. husband's like, why? At castle. Yes. <laughs> and and my husband's like, why are you allowing her all the make? You know, typical dad. Why are you? I said it's better for her to stay in the bathroom for three hours, four hours doing makeup, than going outside and I don't know where she is. So she's better off in the bathroom. <laughs> I'm gonna buy her all the products. She can use it. <laughs> You know, at least I know that she's home instead of going out, right? 
for for a teenager. Wow, it's so, parenting. Yes, <laughs> but anyway, Twice this what I know, but that's why she was like, "Mom, you're very accepting," and I said, "Yes, I'm so accepting with your friends," because you know she she would always tell me, "Oh, you're so nosy." I said, "I'm nosy, but because I love them." And I actually told them I'm one of those um what we call now an ally mom. Yeah, because I always say, you know what? I'll give well pre-COVID that is, and hopefully now. I said, you know what? I always hug kids if they needed a hug, and I said, you know what? As a mom, for me, I don't care. And then it's funny because sometimes one of you know my kid, my my girls will be teasing me. What happened if one of your boys? Because I have two girls and two boys. What happened if one of your boys would come out and want to be a transgender or whatever? I said that we can be fabulous then together. <laughs> <laughs> and and then my husband's like, "Oh my goodness, are you gonna add another bakla in the family?" You know, baba in bakla. I. But you know, I think yeah. this is when things are beautiful because you know what? When both. This just want to just this is just what I would like to tell everyone because you know sometimes it's also hard for the transgender person or vice versa like the family right who do, yeah. who, who can't understand what the transgender kid is going through or so um, I always say it's normal sometimes to feel a certain way whether that be positive or negative because both of you are transitioning together yeah but at the end of the day there should still be a mutual respect and an open mind that each of us should still live our most authentic selves. Mm -hmm. Because it's when all of us are given the chance for us to live our truth and choose our happiness is when this world will be more peaceful, will be more happy, and will be in order. Yeah, actually, that's one thing that um, as parents, you know, when we talk, because, you know, parents talk, you know that, right? They would, some parents would say, I can't believe this person allowed her child, you know, because now we've seen them like before they used to wear dresses, they're girls, and now like they're suddenly what can I say, handsome or poggy now, <laughs> you know, like in, in just a span of two, three years. Cause you know, you see them growing up in school and then I, some parents would say, I can't believe they are, this person is allowing her child to act like that or this one. And I always say, you know what? That person is, you know, that kid is a very good kid. Like I would say he does good in school. He, he volunteers. I, I see no problem if he wants to dress like that. You know, like, that's what I always say. It's like, you know, please. And I think it's really the education also for most parents because it is, sometimes it's easy to judge if it's not your child, right? <laughs> so do you have any, I would say, message for parents who are watching right now? And they are probably feeling that their child is hiding something, <laughs> you know, and maybe their child may be scared. You know, I, I have to say, they could be scared if they are in middle school or high school. Any message to them? I, I think it's a case-to-case -case basis on really what their relationship is with their kid. But my ultimate message is that it's okay if they're part of the LGBTQ plus community. Um, we can have good futures and I hope you guys can support your kids, you know, whoever they are, you know, and because if you don't, it's not going to go away. It's not like it's your choice. It's not like it's their choice. And what they need right now is your love and your support. And if you don't give that, we don't know where they're going to end up at. You know, I've heard so many stories about suicide I've mm -hmm. thought of suicide when I wasn't accepted at 17, you know, um, and have I gone through that and I wouldn't be here and we wouldn't have a good relationship with my mom now. Um, it's a serious thing, you know, and we do experience a lot of like hatred out there. So hopefully at least have a stable home for mm -hmm. them, you know. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, actually, I'm getting teary-eyed because, you know, I would always say, where will your kids get the love, right? Um, Ali? Thank you so much, Miss Rochi, for that question. <laughs> Char. <laughs> um, that was beautiful, Angel. Um, if I could say, um, there's always a lot of organizations that can also um, help out in terms of, you know, knowing the right information, if you don't know what to do or things like that. I mean, like for example, there's PFLAG, Parents and Friends of Lesbian and Gay. And of course, um, they've widened their horizons to basically like the whole spectrum of the LGBTQ plus IA community. And they're actually, you know, parents and friends of people who actually have the whole LGBTQIA spectrum in their family. So, you know what? You are not alone. You know, there's um, a lot of organizations that can help you understand if there are things that you cannot understand. There's a lot of, like, healthcare providers who actually provide um, all the necessary tools, all the necessary connections on who you need to go to or things like that, you know, depending on what age of the kid or the teenager or the adult, we have so much resources now. And that's the reason why we're very thankful to allies like you, Rochi, of basically like having an open mind and having that, um, you know, uh, a woman, a mother who has an open mind and an open heart. Because if everyone is like you, who has an open mind and open heart, then you know what? It will not be hard for every person in this world to blossom. Mm -hmm. And who doesn't want things to blossom and people yeah. to blossom? It's when you think, see things blossom or see people blossom that our world just becomes the most colorful and it's most beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we have some messages here. So I just want to show it to you. Hi, Kuya Ram. Hi, Ate Sonia. Yes, happy Pride. And then, okay, and we have one, two. Yep, we got that one. Say, Babuhay. Hi, Sonia. <laughs> Our co host at Transistors TV. Yes. Kuya Ram yeah. also watches a lot on Transistors and, TV. Yeah. And Ate Sonia is basically a, um, she's like one of our co hosts on our podcast, Transistors TV. Um, and she is also, a very successful celebrity stylist who was also a transgender woman of color. She's also a trans Pinay and she Ooh. lived for 13 years in Japan. And you know what? We're very fortunate to have her um, in our podcast as well because there's someone that we can look up to, you know? So, so yeah. So, and she's here supporting us as well. I think I've watched her because when you said Japan, I remember you got a co-host from Japan. She's one. Okay, she, I would say she's one of the OGs too, right? Yes, more OG than all. <laughs> yeah. So that. Um, lastly, before you know, before we end up. Oh my God, almost an hour. See, it's too much cuento. It's okay, Rochi. We can keep on talking and talking. And talking. <laughs> So how uh, any messages for those teenagers who might be watching this or will watch a replay and who are, you know, finding themselves any advice that you could give them? Um, hi, hello. <laughs> you're gorgeous, whoever you are. <laughs> and if you're LGBTQ or not, you're gorgeous. <laughs> Um, my advice is, um, you know, teenager, I think, is the time when I was also trying to find myself, you know, when I was trying to kind of have um, identity crisis, you know, kind of denial stage, if I'm really this or I'm really that, or can I be this or can I be that? Would people accept me? Would people do this? Do I need to conform with what people are doing? Um, it's kind of hard being a teenager, I think, because you you feel the pressure of everybody in the society um and it's okay to feel that um but just know that whoever you are it's okay who you are and um if your parents or family are not accepting right now um just hold on and never give up i mean the main thing for me is never give up 
um, I because if I have given up, I wouldn't have the chance to be able to transition eventually and be who I am right now, even though at that time it looked very impossible. It looked like it's never going to happen. But um, you have faith and never give up. Mm. That's my message. Thank you. How about you, Ali Cat? Hello, teenager. Hello, whoever you are. I want you to know first and foremost that you are beautiful though just the way you are with or without makeup transition or having transition um and i want you to know that everything in life has its own stages um i myself i transitioned at age 35 i am now 42 years old don't ever think that it's too early don't ever think that it's too late but listen to your heart because your heart will know when it's time to transition. And if you cannot find any support group whatsoever, find some role models, find some people that you can look up to. And um, I want you to know that you're not alone. If, if, if you're scared that to talk to anyone, to, to your friends, to your school, to your family, you know what, there's a reason why you're here. There's a reason why you're watching The Frugalista Mom, you can always reach out to Rochi. Rochi can always um, reach out to me, Ali Cat Castle, or my sister Angel Cannot, and we're here for you. I think the reason why I want to say that is because I and Angel, when we were younger, we did not have role models. We did not have, not, we did not have people to look up to. And we, we don't ever want you to feel that way. We just feel very fortunate that the world has given us so much opportunities. And I don't want to um, not live my life not being able to help to the people, especially of my community. You know, I made it and I want you to make it too. And you will. And we love you. Oh, that is so beautiful. You got the crown. <laughs> Me and Angel have the crown. And yes. You will, sh no, you will share. Rosie has the crown because she <laughs> is very supportive to her kids and mm -hmm. kids' friends and yes. all of you guys. Yeah, because I always say, you know what, be beyond, because I always say people have their talents and it's always to appreciate what they have. I said, I always tell my kids, if you're mean, guess what? I'm mean to you. That's it. <laughs> so I don't care what color, whatever you are. If you're mean, you're mean. And I don't like you. But if you're a nice person, I don't care. Even, it's funny because my son told me, what happened if I want to identify as a dog? Guess what? I'm going to get you a leash and a collar. <laughs> <laughs> and you know because i said as long as you're a good dog guess what we're together you know and i think that is something that we i want to share you know and point out to moms out there um i know it's hard sometimes to accept um if our kids are different because i know my kid i started my blog having my kids with multiple food allergies i am that mom who's always has wipes who can't who will tell the school you can't bring this and you know what what i always tell my kids don't make that um your allergies define you because you're more than that and i think on your part you're more than you know any challenges that we face and as parents we should really support our kids because at the end of the day that's all we want is the best for you and you know what we have an amazing nurse Yes, she is a nurse. That's Angel. She is a she is an actress. Yes, I saw her. She's an actress and a model. And Alika, are you a model too? Did you no, model? I'm a celebrity makeup artist. And yes. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm also actress like a and singer. <laughs> oh, yes. Super. See, yes, the singer. I like that. I always watch that um, songs that you do short clips. But basically, just to say something quickly, but this is basically what every person should also think about you are not just about your gender you are who you are as a whole you have so many talents you're smart you're amazing 
develop that because you know what? That's the best thing that you can offer in this world. It's everything that you can offer. It's not about if I'm a woman. It's not about if I'm male. It's not about if if I'm like LGBTQIA or like cisgender. It's about you. There's only one Rochi. There's only one Angel. There's only one Alicat. There's only one John. There's only one Mary. There's only one you. So that's what you should focus on. That is so powerful. Oh my gosh. I don't want this to end. <laughs> See, I haven't I haven't asked any juicy questions yet. <laughs> but before that, I know it's getting late. Can you invite uh, before we invite them to your um activities? How can we be an ally for those who are, you call us what? Cisgender, is that it? Uh, uh, cis, so cisgender is you're assigned female and you are identifying as female as okay. what you're assigned. So you're cisgender and then straight because you are female attracted to male. So you're a cisgender okay. straight. Okay. So for those of us who are <laughs> S, I would say S straight and cis because I'm learning. How can we be an ally to the LGBT community? Because, you know, some people are like, what will I do? You know, it's also a question. So how can we be an ally? And what are the support that you actually want from us? You know, like you better appreciate this kind of support. So I think whatever you're doing right now, you're being an ally to us. I think it sounds like um, your relationship with your um daughter and the uh, the friend um just being supportive of him the transgender male and kind of the it's kind of comes on those small conversations sometimes that you talk to the other parents about because we all have different society and our different platforms and voices and you have that special voice of being a mom that people listen to it sounds like you know like the other mm-hmm. parents spoke to you about why did they allow that kid to be like that? Because they also value your opinion. And I think you being able to voice out that, you know what, he is who he is and he deserves love and they love him. I think it really comes from knowing that we exist and that we're capable of being loved and capable of being accepted and it's not a choice. I think it starts with that, like understanding that about us and kind of knowing what voices you have and how you can support us in that way. So in your case, I think that's how you can be an ally to us is keep being yourself and keep supporting us. And who knows if that parent would have a kid that will be LGBTQ that comes out to them, maybe you just saved the life of that kid because you were supportive in their minds, you know, to LGBTQ+. plus. Ali? Well, um, I think we're very thankful for you, Rochi, for being a visible ally. You know, I think if you're an ally, please just don't keep quiet. If you see someone who needs your help, or at least who needs to hear that word from you, just say that you're there for them. You don't need to say that, oh, because you're trans, I'm here for you. Just the fact that you say to that person that I'm here for you is more than enough. Just the fact that you actually like created this space and hear our stories. We're very thankful for that already. It doesn't take a lot, you know, for a person to be an ally. You just have to say that, you know what, I'm here for you and things will be okay. And when someone tells you that things will be okay, then you know you will be okay. Mm, I want to hug you now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, virtual hug. There you go. Virtual hug. I'm just very emotional. I mean, like, um, I'm the emotional wreck in the family because we can feel all the love in this room. Mm. <laughs> yes. Now, Angel is an actress, so she can project something right now, right? Well, Angel basically, even if she's the younger, I mean, even if she's younger than me, she's actually really the more mature one in the family. She's also the smartest one in the family. Angel and my oldest brother are the smartest in the family and more mature. I'm the immature one and the youngest. <laughs> yeah, I so know. Basically, it. Which, but but that's also the great thing about life is knowing what hats you're wearing. You get what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because if you know the kind of role you have in the family, the kind of role that you have in the society, 
then you know what? All of us will be able to function well because each person has something great to offer. And that's the reason why, at the end of the day, we just have to celebrate everybody. Mm-hmm. Happy See? Pride! Yes! And actually, for Angel, when you t- when you mentioned that she is very smart, I knew that when, she, when I saw her bio that she came from the College of Computer Studies. <laughs> yeah. Planet Way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it's weird and like, oh, okay, she's there. I know, Val. <laughs> My original degree is in computer science and then I moved to the United States, but I have to immigrate here. So I had to work hard to go back in school and get my nursing degree. <laughs> and now I'm pursuing acting. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's okay. Who who is that? The the doctor, the comedian doctor. He's um, also Asian. I forgot his name. He's uh, Kore- Is it the Korean one? Oh yeah. Um, yeah. So he yeah, said he went. He went. The one in the yeah. yeah. He he said he went to medical school to be a comedian, to be a clown. <laughs> Right. So, I've, I've met a lot of professionals in the entertainment industry. Um, yeah, I know. And if I could also squeeze this in, I just squeeze this in. I know that this keeps on going and going, but this is the last thing I'm gonna say. I myself, I never did good at my academics. I've always had a C. I was already happy when I got 75% in my grades. But don't ever think that just because you did not do good in your academics, that you are not good at something. I followed my heart. I was an artist. I love to draw. I have loved working with women. That's the reason why I became a makeup artist. But I did not realize that because I just did what I love. And now I'm given this platform, you know, and now I'm doing makeup for the presidents of the most powerful people in the world. I know, right? So <laughs> even if you have failed grades, don't get me wrong. You need to study hard, okay? I tried my best. It's just that my best was up to 75%. If I got an 80%, for me, that was already kind of like so good. That was already my A. But what I'm saying is that you there's there's something in you that you just need to develop, that you just need to hone. Because you know what? You will have that. You will have your time to shine. You just need to know what you're good at. So it doesn't mean that just because you're not good at your academics that you're not good at something. So you are also just as good as anyone else. Yes, I like that. So ladies, invite our viewers. Where can we catch you? Any well, gimmicks coming in? Angel? Well, thank you very much everybody for watching. Um, uh, we also have our own YouTube channel. It's called Trans Sisters TV. Um, so be sure to also um, check it out. So we do our live streams every week, um, our community gathering, and then we do like small skits um, of our meanwhiles for the shorts and Ali sings there. And I put some of my acting stuff in there also. Um, and of course, uh, and give it a lot more to come, you know, like it's our creative space and creative outlet. So we have a lot of good things for you guys there. So I hope you guys can subscribe. And then on my um, Instagram, it's Angel Kinan. That's A-N-G-L-Q-I-N-A-N. So usually my projects are there. Um, I just booked a commercial. I, I, the Facebook just like showed like some, one of my pride commercials. Um, so I'm part of there because um, of being part of the queer nurses group. Um, so they featured me there. Um, I have like a short film that's, a little bit about coming out with parents too so i actually cried there so that was i don't know when it's going to come out it's still on editing right now so i have a little bit of projects here and there um maybe stand-up comedy here and there too but uh yeah so just be sure to check out angel kinan that's angel angel q-i-n-a-n on instagram and then trans sisters tv on youtube yes alicat <laughs> yeah so before i basically make promotions first and foremost if you're ha- if all of you are having a great time Please give a thumbs up to the Frugalista mom on this episode. Please subscribe to her channel and please make a comment as well. You know, I mean, we're very thankful for Rochi. If she did not invite us, you will not hear us here. So please support her and please subscribe to her channel. Um, She's amazing and she does amazing for the community. Okay, so now, uh, <laughs> I'm just so shy to promote myself, but yes, please support us as well. I mean, please support my sister, Angel Kinan, on her Instagram. And also, please support us on our YouTube channel, Trans 
Sisters TV. That's three words, Trans Sisters TV, where we gather every Sunday as a community talking about a topic that affects all of us. You know, I mean, and and there, and yes, and I do my singing. And Angel also actually, believe it or not, uh, actually has her... Um, she produced a, uh, a comedy-inspiring transgender series there as well, Ooh. which was... Um, Tra- Starlet uh, Diner. Starlet Diner. I'm having a mental block. So uh, you can see that there. And then please support my channel as well. Oh my gosh, there's so many stuff. <laughs> Ali Cat Castle. And I'm also on YouTube and Instagram. And um, I actually do makeup, skincare, and fragrance reviews, as well as unboxings as well. So, yeah, so please support all of us and thank you so much for being here. We love you so much. At the end of the day, just thank you for being here. Thank you. Actually, I really enjoy Ali Cat's uh, video. Sometimes my husband will be like, who is that? Because, you know, she's very energetic nice. and you will hear her, yes, yes. And my husband's like, what are you watching? <laughs> I, said, I said, it's makeup. <laughs> Barochi, uh, for anyone who's trans, you need to watch Starlet Diner. I want to watch Starlet that. Diner, again, it's on um, Transistors TV. Um, Angel actually produced that. It's basically like, I think, five episodes of like short skits um, starred by three amazing transgender women um, uh, who's like award-winning transgender women as well in the acting industry, Carolina uh, Gutierrez as well as Sarah Carlo. And it also has uh, won awards as well. And it's it's amazing. It's all trans cast, all trans produced. And it's, it's, it's world-class. So all of you, please please see that you're going to be inspired you know it's like five minutes each episode and you know what you're gonna leave happy and you're going to see the importance of friendship the importance of community you know and just having the heart of like doing something and you're gonna love it yeah wow. start oh. diner on transgender tv okay guys i'm gonna put (laughs) i'm going to put the links that they mentioned in the description box later on so that you wouldn't forget and i will put the list and i want to watch that too because i think i haven't seen it yeah but i heard about that i mean i heard it and you got you ladies have so many videos (laughs) <laughs> and I like to keep on clicking because sometimes even just the shorts, I'll be watching all the shorts, like binge watching. And the next thing I knew, I'm already there for like 30 minutes. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Los Angeles, California, I'm with Miss Rochi at the Frugalista Mall. Oh. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Washington, D.C., we are still live here. At the Frugalisa Mom with Rochi, Angel Kanan, and Ali Cat Castle. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to the Frugalista Mom. We love you. <laughs> of course, I'm going to say, meanwhile, here in New Jersey, <laughs> I'm the Frugalista Mom, Rochi, and I'm live with Angel and Ali Cat Castle. <laughs> See, I'm learning. <laughs> Thank you so much, you ladies. So much. Thank you. This is so much fun. This is so much fun. We should do it more often, I have to say. Anytime. Oh, just let us know when and we'll mm-hmm. be back. <laughs> yes. So, guys, don't forget, if you have any questions or comments, you can still put it in the comment box. And we are more than happy to read it. If you have questions, I could forward it to Ali or Angel. And we will will answer you no matter what you know as much as we can though right uh and please just keep it uh pg i would say those questions unless <laughs> unless i want to be blocked by <laughs> youtube or facebook so anyway thank you so much for joining us and i hope you learned something tonight me we hope we made you smile think cry and happy pride month right happy, yes. pride. happy pride thank you so much Bye. Where's my wave?